What's happening? Pandanistas, Peter Von Panda here. Just got a uh, delivery, which I'm super stoked about. This is the long-awaited, the much-anticipated, the much ballyhooed and uh, finely crafted American timepiece called the 1701 Launch Edition from the Detroit Watch Company. First of all, I haven't even opened this. This is going to be true unboxing other than the cardboard it came in. Uh, but it comes in this uh, cardboard box. The cool thing here is it has a silver foil logo for the Detroit Watch Company, which is obviously that calligraphy D. It's uh, very similar to uh, the Detroit Tigers D, but is 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 different and a little more flowing. Um, it's uh, a fairly bold design, and I think it was designed by Patrick, uh, the gentleman who designed this watch itself. It has a printed manual here. It looks like there's a little bit of Detroit history, which is kind of cool. Some drawings of the watch and et cetera, et cetera, um, and all the, uh, the, the, the pertinent information. Um, it's uh, kind of that flat matte uh, finish to the book, and I believe these are also printed in Detroit as well, a print shop there. And then inside is the watch box itself. Uh, stamped right here with uh, the logo and the Detroit Watch Company. Uh, it's cool. This is kind of what uh, Errol Adams of A Blog to Watch is calling the Shinola effect right now, where a lot of boutique watchmakers are kind of popping up domestically from a Canvas Watch Company, which is also in Detroit, to uh, Zedam, and there's a few others uh, that have kind of come back. This uh, looks like a kind of a a PU synthetic leather box. It's pretty cool. It's just a square here, but it's all black, kind of murdered out. And then inside, what's nice is that it has uh, the printing on the inside that says Detroit Watch Company Launch Edition. What makes this into what makes the Launch Edition a Launch Edition is that there is there are two models: the 1701 and the Aviator Watch. The 1701 comes in two dial fit colors, which uh, this silver dial, which is what I have here, a black dial, and the Aviator watch, which just comes in one color, but they are all limited to 50 pieces. So they are all one of 50. I believe the first uh, number in each of those editions is kept by Detroit Watch Company by Patrick and Amy, um, and uh, I believe he hand assembles all these in to the Detroit area. I think it actually might be Bloomfield Hills, uh, as I understand it, but uh, I won't attest to that. I would love to talk to Patrick at some point and find out a little bit more about um, what got him interested in doing this. He is a watch designer, a car designer. Uh, I think the Bozeman Watch Company is kind of one of his former projects. Make some very high-end, expensive watches, and then design cars. And so he's bringing all this design talent to bear on these these watches. The first thing that I know about him is he said that you know watch companies have to have a story, and you know the Detroit story is no less interesting than many other stories. And in fact, I think Shinola has probably originally capitalized on that. It does come with a plastic uh, cover here, and. This one is the 1701 silver dial, and you can see right here on the nine o'clock position, it has a little tiny name, which is, I don't know that I will pronounce this right, but it's called, it says Antoine Lemay de la Moth, Sieur de Cadillac, which is the name of the French explorer who came to the Americas and did not start in Detroit, but ended up Form, uh, uh, forming the uh, Ponch Train du Detroit or Detroit or however you say it in French, which was the the predecessor to the city of Detroit. So uh, kind of a cool uh, history there. As you know, Quebec and there was a huge French history here. Um, and uh, growing up in Detroit, honestly, I didn't really see a lot of French influence. So I don't know if well, some of that has been lost to time or or over time or not, but it uh, certainly seems that uh, kind of the, the French influence itself is not necessarily that pronounced in Detroit. There were, if you're ever looking up the history of Detroit, there's a ton of cool things just from the way they set up the tracts of land and the farming to how influential it was much later in the, uh, the, the French and Indian War. And, um, and you know the commerce and the 
the strategic location on the water, et cetera, et cetera. But I won't get into all that because you just want to know about the watch. First of all, it is a pretty classic design. I, I really like it. Obviously, I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't like it. Uh, but it's it, it's not a hugely avant-garde design in that kind of like that eGuard Passages watch I showed you early, which is kind of a kind of a unique, funky take on it. There's a lot of stylistic things. This is much more classic. It actually looks like kind of some of the higher end uh, watches that you have seen. It is a 44 millimeter polished stainless steel case. It is a very cylindrical case. There's no embellishments on the side per se. So it's got a, it's got a very strong, thick, um, uh, character to it. It's, it looks large and bulky and is probably going to show fingerprints over time. But the, the fact that it's not a huge, it's not an oversized watch and only 44 millimeters, uh, the kind of the shape of the case is going to help make it look and feel maybe just a smidge bigger than that. The lugs are, uh, I know, were intentionally designed. I saw, at least in the sketches, there seem to be a few different versions of them. But they kind of have this little uh, bevel, this little edge here, which is kind of nice. It's a nice little detail on a lot of watches. They just tend to be kind of an afterthought. It's It has a little bit of a ridge here, kind of showing the separation to the case. So it, it kind of stands out a little bit. It doesn't blend in. It just tends to look to me um, like there was some intention put behind it, which I know there was. And it has a little bit of an Art Deco flair to it there. You can see here where the, the bezel and the case are kind of pressed together. There's a little bit of a seam, but it's nice and flush. The, the crown here, which does stick out uh, a fair amount, you know, five, six millimeters potentially, and is has ridges so you can get a nice grip on it, um, has the, 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 the fleur-de-lis on it, which is a very French uh, uh, symbol and it is looks like it's kind of under acrylic or epoxy so it's a it's a nice touch there to have that crown that isn't just a, a milled the 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 floor de lis isn't just milled or stamped into the metal um it uh it's not a screw down crown it winds freely here this uh which kind of brings me to um what makes this unique over some of the shinolas and and it kind of um, ups the game a little bit is that this is an automatic movement so you do get a full-on Miyota 9132 28,000 vibrations per hour with a 40-hour power reserve there's a power reserve indicator up here and as you can see it's in the red zone and so uh, this thing needs probably doesn't need to be wound up but to do that you would just wind uh, clockwise uh, the crown here which would wind up the mainspring and you can actually see the power reserve going up already so that is kind of cool and i know that they tested these and um uh, patrick was sitting on these watches for a while to make sure that all the movements were working properly you can see a sweeping seconds hand here actually in the pictures it's kind of what looks like a baby or sky blue and the seconds hand is blue but it's a much darker blue and in almost every light i can uh see it looks black just in the right light though you get a little bit of that blue purple it's it's a little hard to see you can kind of see it there when um the light hits it just right but otherwise it looks it looks black for the most part which is nice um it doesn't really stand out you know there's some watches that in it that you know paint their the second hands in bright colors yellow or kind of a baby blue and those aren't uh quite as they don't quite have that sophisticated look like this does which tends to look more like um a shimmery metallic or anodized uh, color and it's just got a little bit of subtle hint kind of like the color changing paint uh, it has the date here on by the three o'clock position with the logo the detroit logo um, which looks to be applied and it has uh, looks like loom hour markers which also look to be applied as well the power reserve indicator you can see kind of the semicircle there and then also the uh, 24 hour wheel here at the bottom look like they are single sunk into the dial it's it's a little hard to tell by just looking at it how that is made my assumption is the the outer bezel here the hour ring is also raised a little bit so my assumption is the whole face is stamped to get that depth i do not know and i kind of don't think that they were cut out of multiple pieces and then layered and um uh, uh bonded together but it's possible but my guess is that they are stamped to give that three-dimensional effect and it's a nice three-dimensional effect I, I definitely dig it and even on the the date window it has it's it's it 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 has the um 
it looks like there's depth because there is a pretty strong beveled edge to that date window, which is nice too, because a lot of them are just cutouts and, and, uh, but you can tell this, this dial itself has some depth to it. The second hand also on the, uh, on the, the back end of it has that the Detroit Watch Company logo, the calligraphy D on it, which is a nice uh, feature to have on there. The hour and the minute hands are interesting. I had to exchange some uh, correspondence with uh, Patrick on the Facebook page for this, asking what was the inspiration for these hands, because to me, they look a little, these are probably where the biggest departure from a very classic style watch. And, and his comment was that they were inspired by the nibs on fountain pens. And I can definitely see that once he um, threw that out there. And he also said to some extent swords. They, they look like they have loom on the end. And actually the part in the middle, the, the fulcrum, the pivot points there are where I think the nib, the, the pen nib would be. And then you usually have this uh, longer trailing edge that uh, gets stuck into the ink uh, portion of the pen itself. So now that he's told me that, I can see that. You know, it's a it's a little they 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 definitely stand out one because it's such a classic design for a watch, and everything is so kind of fine fine finite and finely detailed um, and kind of delicate looking. That the hands being kind of broad and even folded in the middle to actually even create more of that nib sword field feel uh you can see that there's just a they're, they're kind of folded right down the the center splayed um so that they have a little bit of a tenting effect on the hands you know the, the hands are a little bit more bold than everything else and so it kind of stands out you you usually on these expect kind of the standard clock arrow the really thin arrow hands on something that is a real classic watch face like this uh detroit watch company is uh pre uh painted or screened on the top here as it says Detroit, Michigan, which is nice because I grew up there. There are some little numbers. Uh, the, the minute markers are, are very, have very small um, Arabic numeral markings. And then there was some commenting about the Roman numerals on the hour markers too. And I know that they are planning on making an Arabic numeral uh, version of this watch because of some of the feedback. I think the Roman numerals, I'm not a huge Roman numerals person, but I think they are perfect for this style of watch, which tends to be, like I said, a little more classic, a little more old fashioned, a little more styled for traditional watchmaking. And I think they fit perfectly because the Roman numerals tend to be a little more elegant and, and, and thin and, like I said, more detailed and kind of fit all of the very, very small uh, details around the watch. The other thing I was a little concerned about, and I don't have concerns about getting this watch, is that when you tend to do a silver dial, they it almost makes the watch look unfinished sometimes. So, uh, you know, a silver dial can kind of look like the side of a, of a pop can, but and I and I kind of like white on smaller cases because it helps make that face pop stand out, make it look a little bigger. And so I was a little worried if that dial would blend into the the uh the metal of the watch it does not it's it is a very metallic silver finish but it's much brighter than i was expecting so if you were expecting aluminum can finish or kind of a you know the the, the type of finish you have on um say a faucet you can rest easy knowing that this is much more uh kind of between silver and pearlescent white in my opinion we'll have to see how it is in different lights but um, it's much brighter than I thought and that that kind of gave me a little bit of pause between going the black and going with the silver If it had been white, I would have had absolutely no issue But I think this is perfect uh, and you know and that that uh, metallic finish there really kind of gives it a nice um, a nice rich quality look the uh, Back of the watch well now let me go to the watch band here first of all. This is a pretty thick leather watch band it's probably five millimeters thick. It is uh, genuine leather. I believe it's a 22 millimeter. It's white contrast stitching here. It looks like a, a standard uh, watch band, but it is a deployment clasp. It's, it has the D, looks like sandblasted there into the watch. And I'll open it up here. And because it's th because the band is this thick, these can sometimes be a little bit, uh, a little harder to, uh, kind of manipulate and break in but it has a pretty standard deployment clasp 
and it's this is actually pretty easy to use a nice high quality clasp and you're gonna want to tuck the band into these uh, catches before you 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 snap the sucker shut just because I think of the the thickness of this watch band um, so double pusher there I, I like it you can adjust this um, with in with uh, the holes I'm not gonna do any of that right now but and the Detroit watch company is uh, branded into the back uh, I wanted to take take this opportunity though to take a quick peek at I guess I will open it up and actually it's pretty easy um, nice nice quality deployment class very easy and it's actually a perfect fit for this band you know sometimes you really have to kind of force these there isn't a lot of room this is just a perfect fit there's a little bit of resistance but it's easy to move around but I wanted to open it up so we can look at the case back here so I this is the case back looks like it screws down with uh, five screws on the edge here it doesn't have an exhibition back it has the sandblasted finish with the florida lee and it says detroit watch company born in detroit you know and and i know there's some legal issues with saying made in detroit and or made in the usa when some of the components come from overseas and i my assumption is with these miyota movements the the movement is generally assembled before it gets here so um born in detroit is probably is accurate but it's probably also legally uh uh, more amenable to uh, people who market these watches and this one is number 30 of 50 so each of these case backs will be customized with the, the number of the launch edition sapphire crystal stainless steel construction and water resistance to five atoms let me take go to the crystal here um, because I was curious in the pictures I believe it looks like it has an anti-reflective coating. It does reflect, but uh, it actually doesn't. Uh, it doesn't glare quite as badly as a non-reflective coating. But it's a flat crystal. It's, it is perfectly flat across the 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 watch. There's no curvature to it, and it's just ever so slightly raised. So, kind of a uh, you know, it's everything is just a nice fit and finish. Um, this is a watch that, to be honest, is kind of a watch in the know. Um, there is, you know, if, if you, if I just saw someone wearing this watch and I didn't know anything about the Detroit watch company, I pr probably wouldn't stand out to me to say, Hey, what is that? You know, it kind of looks like a lot of, uh, dress watches, but, uh, you know, if you see this, you see one of the aviators out there. Um, I think it's a very small fraternity of guys that are going to have these obviously only 150 on this launch edition. So it's, uh, it's definitely something to to call out because uh, the guys that have these I think are very passionate about it. Um, I'm really looking forward to they are going to have some regular uh, non-limited edition, non-launch edition watches. The one coming up I believe is the Woodward Chronograph. I am certainly excited about checking that out. I really like chronographs. I even hear rumors that that might be a Swiss made movement. While I'm not a movement snob, <laughs> or I'll say I'm not, uh, you know, it, it would be kind of cool to have a watch from Detroit that has a um, a, a Swiss movement. Nothing wrong with these Miyota movements. I have them in other watches. They are very reliable. They're easy to service and in some ways I think they're superior. But you know a lot of watch collectors that want to add something uh, really are looking for that Swiss um, that Swiss origin. Not that there's anything wrong with uh, having a non-Swiss movement. So just really excited about this watch. I think uh, retail wise, this is about 900 bucks. The Aviator is about $100 cheaper. We'll see what the uh, next generation of watches from the Detroit Watch Company look like and cost. But usually on a chronograph, because of the additional complications, they can be a little more. But uh, just a really cool. It's, again, something unique. This is a price point where a lot of Shinolas fall with uh, a quartz movement and again you get a lot of the same type you know you get the sapphire crystal stainless steel polish construction nice leather band and all that so a lot of value i think in the money or in the watch because at this price point you know particularly given that it's a an automatic movement but on the flip side you don't get all the marketing horsepower you do behind Shinola. And I and I actually only found this company because Shinola put a link on their Facebook page about it. So kudos to uh, all the companies for helping each other out and finding, uh, you know, ways to to flourish even with competition. I think it's all healthy and uh, and it and it certainly does um, the economy good. But I think it does kind of the spirit, the mojo and the morale of Detroit and American general a, a lot of good. So. 
my 1701 launch edition watch from the Detroit Watch Company. Check them out at DetroitWatchCo.com and uh, keep your eyes peeled for what comes next. I'm certainly excited about checking it out. Peter Von Panda, out.